Hey guys, Dylan from the Geek Duo here, and today I'll be bringing you my reaction to Tales of the Jedi Episode 2, titled Justice. Two Jedi are dispatched to resolve a hostage situation on a distant planet. And I don't actually know who this thumbnail is. Like, with the first episode, it was easy to tell because of the them being Togruta. I think that's how you pronounce it. I did look up the actual name of the race. Like episode 3, that's very clearly who that is. The only thing I can think of is maybe it's the same as the one in episode 4. Which has a very similar profile to Count Dooku. Which I guess would make the other one Qui-Gon. But I don't actually know. I'm sure by actually watching the episode I'll find that out very quickly. But I'd like to go in with at least a little idea of what's coming. But yeah. um, I don't actually know how, <coughs> how Sidious has convinced Dooku to turn from the Jedi so I don't actually know what is going to happen in this I don't know anything about his backstory or anything other than he used to be a Jedi he was Yoda's Padawan I'm pretty sure I think he trained Qui-Gon I'm not con I'm not 100% on that last one but Let's get this started in three, two, one, go. Well, maybe he trained alongside Qui Gon. That would make more sense. But yeah, um. I don't know anything about um, Dooku's backstory other than who he trained under and that Sidious was the one who took him on as an apprentice. Well, I guess that answers the um, third question I had. Unless, of course, that's not quite one. Also, that lip, lip, sync, lip sync was a little off on um, who I'm assuming is Dooku. Oh yeah, I could definitely see Qui-Gon in that. It's always interesting when an animation style is so unique, yet they're also trying to model it after a specific person. Because you've got to question how much of it can bleed through without screwing with the ways in which you designed your characters. That, that's just a regular dog. At least one of those silhouettes was a familiar species. We don't like your kind around here. 
my code outsiders He sounds less Dooku and more Snape. Definitely not there though. Oh. <laughs> Fresh here then. Do you have blue hair? It looks like a blue black. A weird thing for me to focus on. I was expecting an actual child, not. Mid teen, mid to late teens. Well, that's gone well.
Aren't you known for your negotiation skills, Qui-Gon? We had seen Dugo with blue. Heh. <laughs> I agree, that is a stupidly designed hilt. I mean, there are, like, not quite a long sword, but it's much easier to use two hands. Yet he's got the same distance, but can't do two hands. You already have. When the Senate no longer serves the people, the Senate should be changed. Just, you shouldn't outright kill the Senator, that is the problematic one. Should be deposed by the people. Now, had he fallen in the firefight, that would have been different.
Hmm, that was a very interesting episode. Because, like, you can see how each character on the villager's side thought they were doing what was right. Like, the townspeople kidnapped the senator's son in an attempt to force him to change his ways, but in turn also showed the senator's son what was happening in the area, who then made his father change. Dooku realized that without some intervention, that senator would not change, and that the townspeople's kidnapping idea had not had its intended effect. So he figured if you remove the senator, then these people would no longer be in pain. And Obi-Wan realized that the necessary impact had already been done. They need to take the life for the change to happen. Like, you could see that all three of them, their ideas had to work together for it to um, come, to, like, the change to actually happen. Because if Dooku hadn't of held the senator there, and almost taken him out, then it's entirely reasonable to believe that the Senate would not have actually changed his ways. But then he realised that there were actually people willing to go farther than, like, the right way says to change his actions. Plus, hearing that his own son had been swayed by the people that had kidnapped him. Like. N Dooku obviously was in the wrong. But. His actions did help. One thing. Completely unrelated to this. Um, episode. One thing I've always wondered. Why did Dooku never get Sith eyes? Like, has that ever been explained? I just remember him having regular eyes in the movies. And this is obviously before he got turned to the dark side, so he wouldn't have them now. Um... Trying to see who voiced the characters. Um, that name sounds familiar. <laughs> hmm. Ah, well, that would that would probably be why he voiced Cad Bane in the Book of Boba Fett. And the ba No. In the Bad Batch. And then he voiced um Duga and Cad Bane in the Clone Wars, okay. Mikhail Richardson was um Qui Gon. The name also sounds familiar. Uh, yet for no reason. Okay. But yeah, that was a much different tone of an episode compared to the first one. But it was still good. Still very enjoyable to watch. So with that being said, I'll catch you in the next one.